What is suspension of disbelief? It's a way for you as a storyteller to really immerse someone, make them believe that they are in that world, in that space. And it's a, it's a storytelling, um, I guess, way of explaining how you can really immerse someone in an environment and in a situation where they forget everything else and they can be truly present in, um, in the world that you've created and the story that you've created. So being able to suspend your audience's disbelief in creating, um, you know, if you're walking into a space that's supposed to look like you're going into a space shuttle, for example, can you suspend your audience's disbelief that for a moment they truly are? And for a lot of the times when an audience or a visitor goes into an experience like this, they are willingly, um, they willingly want to suspend their disbelief because they want to experience something that really transports them into this other world. So uh, as a creator and as a storyteller, how can you best um, have that environment, have that world truly capture their imagination and meet and exceed their expectations of what being in a space shuttle would really feel like, right? And how can you do that with not only the um, environment that you create, but maybe through movement, through murmur, through sound, through scent, uh, through what they feel and touch and hear and you know um, experience. I think that that's something as an immersive storyteller you need to think about is how do you suspend your audience's disbelief so that they feel like this is truly where they're walking into and this is truly the world that in their wildest imaginations has come alive and come true for them. What tools can you use to get someone to suspend their disbelief? I think you can use whatever tool is at your disposal. I mean, I remember as a kid going through the Haunted Mansion for the first time in Disneyland and wanting to recreate my own Haunted Mansion in my own, my cousin's actually, bedroom. And you work with whatever you can get. I mean, whatever is around you. You don't have to have a multi-million dollar budget. You can work with um, whatever it is you have at your disposal. At the time, you know, it was just moving around furniture, using makeup to make ourselves look like ghosts, darkening the rooms, having the right music. And a lot of what you do to suspend an audience's disbelief is your allowing yourself, giving yourself that permission to really open up your imagination and create something unlike anything you've seen before. And I think the ones that are truly uh, game-changing in terms of using tools in unexpected ways or using um, you know, a different kind of medium to be able to suspend your audience's disbelief, doing it in a surprising way, those are the ones that really speak to me. Those are the ones that really uh, surprise and delight me because it's not like you see you're inspired by something and then replicate it in the exact same way because there's plenty of that going on around in the world, right? How can you create something that has your mark, your personality, your perspective, your tone, um, in a way that reshapes, retells that world, that story in a way that's unique and the way that is authentically you. So whether you, you all you have is a basement or a storage unit, or uh, you know, if you do have a whole mansion to play with, you know, I think it really it's up to you as the artist, as the creator, as a storyteller to really uh, think outside the box uh, to think about how to use any tool at your disposable at your disposal to really create something truly unique. 
Well, you talk about in your book that um, when you read or watch a movie or even hike, that you're present finally. Because mm -hmm. especially today, we're so distracted. And you talked about the urge to check your phone yes. even when you go in an elevator. We all do that. But that you're truly present when you're in a story mm -hmm. that that or even just in an environment, whether it's hiking mm -hmm. or wherever. So uh, maybe that's the real test is how present is the audience mm -hmm. and how can yes. we make them be present Yes. So that they don't have an urge to to pick up the phone or yeah. do something else. Oh yeah, definitely. I think that, and the real test is when you see real emotions, right? When you see, you know, nothing gets me more than seeing, you know, kids kind of like their eyes widen um, because, and children are really one of the best. I. I feel like the the most satisfying audience members for me because when you could see it in their eyes that they believe what they're seeing, that is magic. You know, being able to, you as a creator, storyteller, magician, to conjure up a world in which they believe they're in it and that they're living it is something that all immersive storytellers should really strive for. Um, to really suspend that disbelief and and have them be present and have them forget about everything else, especially with kids who are very screen, um, you know, they would rather the screen among other things, you know, these days. And my nine-year-old son being one of them, um, we want to create that those worlds and environments and places for them to play again. And... You know, there's nothing wrong with playing video. I, I grew up playing video games. I watched a ton of TV and films, but it's all about variety and having that um, chance to really forget about um, just the, the daily routine and really being present in a place where it's not it, it's not just about what you do every day and uh the things to check off the list or anything like that. It's being able to let go, giving permission uh, to your for to yourself to be free to explore, to discover, to play, to engage, to interact with people that you wouldn't normally interact with. Um, to give you the courage, really, to be in a, a story and in a world where you might not initially feel comfortable about but really letting yourself go to enjoy it and to participate. I think that there's so many things going on in the world where you can just sit back and watch a thing or be passive observers. And as immersive storytellers, we really want our we really want people to step in and participate and to engage and to interact and to act. It's all these active verbs that we always think about when we create an immersive story world. Um, and that's how even when we think about a museum or a land or a ride or an attraction or a show, sometimes all, you know, sometimes the way that you can think about it is what are the active verbs that you want people to do? Is it to explore, to dive into a pool of sprinkles, to go down a slide, to climb this ladder, to, you know, uh, sit at a table where the plates come to life, um, to speak with a stranger that's next to you, to open a door that uh, opens to a portal into another world, right? It's all of these things that, you know, you as a audience member, participant, uh, can have that opportunity to do that's unlike anything that you can do in your ordinary life. And as a storyteller, it's a really great privilege for you to have to create that opportunity for other people to immerse themselves in a world that, uh, that they don't normally find themselves in.